Well, uh, good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for taking the time to be here today. Uh, today, we welcome two players to the organization, one returning uh, and, and one new to the organization. Um, Adam Ottavino was a valuable asset uh, to our bullpen last year. Um, he's durable, effective, dependable throughout the entire season. He brings veteran leadership to the pitching staff and pitches in high leverage situations, as a lot of you saw, whether that's bridging the gap and, and handing the ball off to Edwin um, or even closing games uh, himself. So very excited to uh, to have him have him back and um, equally excited to, to welcome Omar to the organization. Uh, Omar brings a skill set that that you know we value uh, on the offensive side. He displays a solid approach at the plate, uh, contact ability, and provides left-handed bat that that will really deepen and, and blends well with our roster as it's currently constructed. And, you know, throughout his career, he's shown an impressive defensive skills, and we believe that it'll work uh, extremely well with our pitching staff. I know, you know, both these guys are just as excited as I am to uh, to to get down to camp, head to Port St. Lucie. Um, Adam, Omar, I, I know this is a little overdue. I text you guys welcome officially uh, back, but we're excited to have you here. Thanks for being on today. And, and Adam, in your case, welcome back. And Omar, officially welcome. Thanks, Billy. Adam, would you like to say a couple of statements? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I guess, uh, first of all, I just feel uh, extremely thankful and blessed to be back with the team. Um, it's really exciting. Um, and my family's really fired up for this year. Um, we're getting pretty close here, about a month away from uh, heading down to St. Lucie. And uh, I, can't, I can't wait. Uh, really looking forward to getting around the group again and uh, seeing what we can do this year. Great, no more. Yeah, um, I'm just uh, grateful to be on the team and I'm excited to be uh, such a good team and trying to win, that's the main goal. And uh, I just uh, want to put my hands on fire for each one of my teammates and uh, looking forward to be in camp and really excited to be on a really good team. Thank you. We'll now open it up to questions. If you wouldn't mind using the raise your hand feature, and again, when you call them, please state your name and organization. Our first question will come from Anthony DeComo. Hey guys, uh, this is for either Adam or Omar. Uh, I guess, Adam, you have a perspective of having been here last year, but um, this is a much different roster than it was uh, a few months ago. What do you just make of everything that's gone on this offseason and what the team looks like going into February? Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously last year was a great year. Um, we all knew as the season was winding down that there was going to be change coming uh, at the end of the year because there was just so many free agents and it's just impossible to keep everybody on the same team. But, um, you know, it seems like for everybody that left, uh, somebody new came in and then some. So, um, you know, really excited about all the new guys that came and excited to meet them and learn from them and, you know, see how this team gels uh, uniquely this year. Um, but it's definitely been a lot to, you know, read on the internet and all that sort of stuff this year. And um, it's very exciting. And I guess, Omar, from your perspective as someone who wasn't here, uh, you know, what was your reaction when you did get traded to the Mets? And, or excuse me, when you did sign with the Mets and, um, uh, you know, just the, the talent that is in this clubhouse? Yeah, pretty happy to see, um, you know, everybody in the team and really exciting players that I'm going to be sharing the clubhouse with. And, uh, Looking forward to being a great team and and have a little put uh, just give a, my a little push to win ball games. Thank you. Next up is Mike Puma. <clears throat> Omar, knowing uh, they had some catchers already and uh, they have the rookie Alvarez on the way. I mean, what 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 made uh, the Mets appealing for you? I think my experience and, you know, I've been able to have a good relationship with pitcher staff and learning from each other. And if I can help Alvarez to grow and be part of this team also, I'm going to do it. And Adam, uh, I mean, you probably had some options to go elsewhere. I would think uh, coming back to New York, uh, how important was that for you to, to kind of stay here? 
Um, I, I don't think it was like uniquely important uh, this time around uh, location as much as maybe in the past. Um, you know, we're in a good place uh, family wise, but I think the team in particular uh, had such a fun time last year and I really gelled well with a lot of the coaches and trainers and all the people that work for the organization. So um, I just felt like one year wasn't really going to be uh, it would have been kind of a bummer to leave. You know, I wanted to come back and see what we can do this year. Um, we were we had a great regular season last year, and I, I know that we can push a little harder this year. Hopefully, um, you know, get a little further in the playoffs, if not, you know, go the whole way, obviously. But, um, yeah, it really was just more about the team. You know, I had a great year last year in terms of, you know, fun, interacting with fans, um, you know, and everybody that works for the club. And what did you think of the bullpen moves? They Obviously, they uh, re-signed. Diaz brought in Robertson. Uh, they've they've made some moves there. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, Sugar being back is big. You know, he had one of the most impressive seasons I've ever seen last year, and uh, he's a great friend. So it's awesome to share the pen with him. And you know, the other guys, I don't know them yet. I will get to know them, but I know they're very talented. And you know, certainly, and um, you know, David's case, he's a guy that I've been watching a long time, and look forward to picking his brain and you know, seeing what I can learn there. Thank you. Next up is Will Salmon. Hey, Omar. Um, just what was your plan or process for kind of getting to know a whole new uh, pitching staff? And you mentioned uh, Francisco Alvarez. Do you have a, any prior relationship with him at all? Not yet. Um, I know he uh, stays here in Miami at some point. He's going to come back. He's down in Venezuela right now. So um, I'm just looking forward to kind of meet him and, you know, share a little information and, you know, kind of give him everything I got from experience and help him through the old way. Um, and the fires are getting to know everybody on on the Mets. I'm I'm just gonna uh, I'm probably gonna be on camp earlier, so I give him more chance and to meet everybody and and uh, get the much information as I can for help these guys and obviously to learn from them. Next, we'll go to Ron Blum. Hi, for Billy, uh, since it's our first chance to speak to you in a while, could you detail how the concerns came up in Carlos's uh, foot in the examination and how, why you guys stopped or determined to, you would guarantee half of it? And do you feel leaving disappointed that the deal didn't come together? Appreciate the question, Ron, and uh, the purpose behind asking it. Uh, however, I'm not going to go into any detail um, there, just out of uh, uh, privacy reasons, as well as uh, out of respect to Carlos. So appreciate the question, but uh, I'm not going to elaborate on it. Okay. And then for Adam, your deal is somewhat unusual in deals from the last few years. How did all the deferred money come about in the negotiations? You know, I think uh, it's kind of a give and take on both sides, like every negotiation is. Uh, I don't want to get too much into it, but ultimately, um, you know, got to a number that I thought was a little more representative of, you know, my value. Um, I have to wait a little while to collect on all that, but that's perfectly fine. And, you know, I have the opportunity uh, to see what happens this year, you know, and um, kind of how my season goes. But really, I just wanted to find a way to make it work with this club and come back um you know really that's it. it's really all i can say about that next up laura albany's uh for billy just uh when steve was asked about the korea deal he said he needed one more hitter uh do you still view that as a necessity and something that you're going to be pursuing you know i think we have a strong and deep lineup um, I'm confident in our, our group's ability to score runs, but look, you know, I think I, this goes without saying, and I think I've, I've said in the past relating to, to any, any one of the areas of, of the organization, you know, like you can always be better. Um, that's, uh, kind of the, uh, the purpose of making sure that you're not sitting in a, in a fixed mindset and, and you kind of, um, adopt, uh, more of a mindset or growth-based mindset where you can always improve. Um, that's what we're going to look to do. Um, you have to look for opportunities out there. And, um, you know, sometimes, you know, certain markets are 
you know, a little bit more, um, uh, a little bit more quiet at certain times of the year. Um, and, uh, you know, but you're always looking to, to, to get better, but I do, I do think we have a strong, a strong lineup as currently configured, um, but, but we can always be better. Oh, and, uh, and for Adam, uh, you showed some significant improvements last year and just in terms of your control and your strikeout rate, especially with that slider, what were some of the tweaks or some of the adjustments you were able to make? Uh, really, it was just a return to some fundamentals. Um, I've had seasons in my past where I had low walk rates and um, changed some of my approach over the years, one reason or another. Uh, but this year, you know, I really made a, well, this past year, I really made a concerted effort to throw strike one uh, more often and to challenge people in the zone a little bit, uh, given that I've uh, improved a lot of my pitches. And I was able to kind of get on a good roll with that and um, keep it going for a while. And that's something that I'm definitely looking to continue. Back to Mike. Billy, ideally, would you still like to add another bullpen arm and another outfielder, or is that not crucial? Um, I'm still engaged and in the market, um, talking to uh, you know representation in in both spaces, uh, both in the outfield uh, and in the bullpen spot. Um, so still active whether anything actually comes to fruition and, and, you know, we're doing another one of these um, remains to be seen, but, uh, but definitely still having the conversations. And will you go into spring training with the idea Escobar's your, your starting third baseman or does Beatty have a chance to win that job? Um, I mean, these will be conversations that, you know, uh, Buck and I will have and with the, with the staff as, as kind of, camp goes on, um, you know, I, I, I will, you know, remind people that, you know, Escobar had a really strong year last year. Um, and, uh, and, and Brett was, you know, Brett's call up was, you know, was born out of necessity, um, last year, you know, it was Luis Guillorme had the injury in, in August and we were looking for, um, you know, a left-handed bat to kind of compliment at that, at that moment in time. And so, um, you know, I don't, I don't want to, you know, kind of forecast what will come at the end of March. Um, that's why we're going to go down to uh, Port St. Lucie, and that's why we're going to, you know, see what we see. Um, and these will be conversations that I have with with Buck and the coaching staff, and and you know, we'll kind of explore every uh, every option. But um, but you know, we feel very good about Eduardo Escobar. Thanks, Andy. You're up. Uh, Adam, I read that you'd been working with a, a pitch timer at home over the off season to get used to that um, uh, this coming year. Uh, having done that for a little bit already, how difficult or not difficult of an adjustment do you think that'll be for pitchers generally through spring training to opening day? And do you think uh, uh, that's going to take some time for pitchers to get used to? Um, I, it's hard to say. Um you know, individually, I feel like it's not going to be that difficult for me. Uh, just a little time of practice has already kind of helped a little bit with that. Um, also, you know, there's some ways that you can figure out how to kind of stop the clock if need be and kind of making understanding those in the moment when you need a second to kind of collect yourself. That's important. And that's the kind of stuff that we're going to be workshopping during spring training. Everybody is across the whole league. So I'm sure some people have a harder time with it than others, but I think overall, you know, we're pretty good at making adjustments uh, as athletes, and I think we'll be all right. Thanks. Mark Roseman. Welcome, Omar. Mark Roseman from Sports Talk New York. I know you've had the opportunity to catch uh, Jose Quintana, David Robertson, and John Curtis. You also mentioned you were going to get down to spring training a little earlier. Um, just as a catcher, what's this prospect uh, of catching uh, uh, Justin Verlander and Max Scherzer like for you? And what are you looking forward to catching those two guys? Well, first of all, it is, it's an honor to be in, you know, be behind the plate for them and see um, as a kid watching the pitch. But now um, in terms of working, I'm just got to get to know them and what they like, you know, during games me uh what they want me to say or what they want me to do for them you know i'm gonna still doing my homework i'm gonna still doing my game plan and trying to match their their um game plan with mine and 
have just one um, game plan together and try to execute it. That's the bottom line we got. Mark Healy. This question is uh, for Buck. Uh, of course, welcome back, Adam, and uh, welcome, Omar. But this question is for Buck. Hey, Buck, um, you know, the World Baseball Classic going to take, you know, it's going to be happening uh, this spring. And, you know, with the rule changes and everything, you know, Harry Rose mentioned this yesterday on social media. How much is uh, not having everyone in camp? Because the WBC is not going to be, you know, following the rule, uh, the rules that are going into place for Major League Baseball this year. So how much is that going to impact you getting everybody up to speed uh, before the start of the season? Well, it'll be a unique challenge. It's, uh, it's kind of nobody can say for sure, but uh, you just got to be prepared for it. Um, you know, most things with MLB, once you look into it, you understand the challenges, why they can't do it that way. You know, we're not alone. You know, there's other countries competing and, um, you know, they're following a different set of rules than we are. So you're trying to be fair to all the competition in the WBC. And, and I'm sure they felt like to be fair to everybody, this is the way that they were, the direction they were going to go. And the challenge is then presented to the major league clubs. You know, the good part of it is we have a lot of good players. The bad part is those good players from all over the world are, are going to be leaving us for different periods of time. So, you know, we thought uh, the lockout was a unique challenge last year and it put us in a position where we, we couldn't do some things that we normally would do in the spring. And unfortunately, there'll be some of that this year. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll make the adjustments. It's something that's good for baseball and good for the industry. So, you know, it's uh, up to us to make the adjustments and uh, prepare. We've got some very uh, – got a lot of guys with, with uh, a lot of uh, – baseball acumen that will pick up things very quickly and it's up to us to to be able to present it properly so you know the players know what's coming and what's going to be expected of them and you know guys like Adam and I'm sure Omar some have uh, have been already been thinking about it and um, uh, I think it's something that, you know baseball is a game of constant adjustments anyway not only by players but by staff you know you take what's presented to you and you make the best of it so it's not like uh you know, the Braves are going to be able to do it one way and we're not going to be able to, to do it that way. No, the difference is it's not completely fair, but, you know, it is what it is. Some teams won't have as many players missing as other teams will. But uh, that's part of having good players. Abby? Uh, this question's for Omar. Um, as a catcher, you know, how you how do you approach um, some of the new rules and the, the timers and how do you sort of, um, in your role, help pitchers try to adjust, and how, how do you think that people are going to be able to adjust in spring training? Is that enough time to fully get adjusted before the season starts? Um, I don't know if it's going to be a, you know enough time, but I think we are going to make the adjustment and trying to get better on it. Um, on the time during games, I think that's that's where homework and and the plan that's going to come in place even even more and. Uh, just keep, uh, just keep our body uh, working on the same page, and everything's gonna gonna uh, keep moving smooth. So that's the, that's the thing we're gonna um, we're gonna work the spring training. Thank you, Mike. Again, Bill, you you guys were fifth in runs scored in in baseball last year. Are you confident that this lineup you're bringing back that you have right now is as good or better than last last season and that's the goal you know um yeah we were we were fifth in run scored i think we were second in on base percentage um and you know i it, a lot of you have seen plenty of games in city field it's not exactly um you know the greatest home run environment in the world but um some reasons for for optimism on our part is uh, one we're going to see a uh, you know, a little bit more restrictions, obviously, on defensive positioning. Um, as we see the restrictions on defensive positioning that happen in the game, um, I think it stands to reason that some contact and, and a contact approach um, would would get rewarded. There'd be more traffic on the bases. Um, to couple with that, that high on base percentage, you're probably going to see average go up a little bit. 
and you look at our offensive environment, um, you know, there's many ways to score um, quality base running, having a lot of, um, you know, hitters that can manipulate the, you know, manipulate the the barrel a little bit. So, um, and I think even when you, when you factor in, um, you know, the ballpark environment and the stadium that we play in, um, you know, there's certain metrics out there um, that are, you know, out in the public space that, that show, all right, what happened if this team played in a context, context neutral environment, right? That's, I think WRC plus is one of the ones that does that. And I think we were third in baseball in offensive production. So, um, you know, while hitting a three pointer is, is cool, you know, every now and again, um, and having guys that can, that can put a ball in the seats. Um, I want a lineup that's able to beat people in a number of different ways. And we know one thing is a given, we are going to play 81 games in that ballpark. Um, and so having guys that can do and execute, um, you know, an offensive strategy that, that if, if Buck wants to execute a particular strategy or implement a, a particular strategy on any one given night or against any kind of particular, you know, pitcher, having hitters that can do that, uh, I think that provides value. Um, you know, so I like power. I like contact. Um, I like on base. Um, I'm kind of greedy. I like it all. Uh, but I want to be able to beat anybody um, in any any particular way. So um, I think that that fits our scheme. Um, that, I think that fits our ballpark. So um, I think there's reasons that uh, we should feel good about our offense. Where it's going to rank is where it's going to rank. Uh, but the components are there um, to have a successful offensive season. And Laura again. Billy, uh, have you guys opened talks at all for extensions for Pete Alonzo and Jeff McNeil? And is that something that the organization is thinking of pursuing? Um, you know, any, any kind of conversations that that we're going to have um, with our with our players, I, I always want to keep those um, internal. So um, it's just I, I just I'm not a big believer in in uh, talking about those types of things or anybody's uh, employment or contract status or any of those types of natures. I, I don't like doing that publicly. So I'm going to just give you the, uh, the, I wouldn't say uh, that I, I tend to throw out now and again. Ron. Right, for Billy, the slight change in dimensions in right center field, is that at all baseball driven or is that just like the fan experience commercial driven or is it part of both? Um, that was fan experience driven. Um, so, um, you know, we've been able to try to, uh, you know, forecast what that, you know, will ultimately mean, but um, it, I don't think it's going to be, you know, real material um, on the, um, on the baseball side, but uh, it's a, it's a fan experience um, initiative. Adam, Omar. Welcome back. Thank you very much for you two and Billy and Buck for joining the call today. And we appreciate everybody for being here. Thank you very that's much. My, that's okay. my kind of press conference there. Yes, sir. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for showing. Thank you. See you, everyone.